the North Dakota state record burbot was just caught. How many crayfish do you think were in this fish's belly? And walleyes so big they have to be taking steroids. We got that and more coming up right now in Target Walleye's Top 5 presented by Seafoam. Let's dive on in. Number 1. For the love of bourbon, baby, Shane Johnson of Minot, North Dakota, just notched his name in the record books in a big, slimy way. I'm talking nearly 42 inches of bourbon, aka eel pout. They win 19 pounds, 5 ounces. Interestingly enough, that freakazoid was caught out of open water in January in the state of North Dakota where it's hard to even imagine there being any H2O in its liquid form. I actually lived in Grand Forks, North Dakota for four years while going to college at UND. And I'm pretty sure that North Dakota is the reason that us Midwesterners call it pop instead of soda. Shane was fishing the Garrison Dam tail race. He said it was just cold and miserable and foggy and that that was actually the only bite they ended up getting that night. But it ended up being a state record burbot, so I would say worth it. Speaking of big burbot, that brings us to number two. So I just got back from Lake of the Woods, chasing walleyes and sauger out in the muddy basin. But of course, we're always hoping for that bonus burbot bite because I think five of the last seven state records have come from there. And it can happen anywhere, anytime on Lake of the Woods, no matter the time of season, day or night. We actually ended up catching four burbot during that two day trip. Two of them came out of Borderview Lodge sleeper houses after dark on rattle reels. But two of them also came in the daytime, like I'm talking 11.30, maybe noon. It was like lunchtime, middle of the day, fishing out of a couple of Sportsman's Lodge day houses, including one of the paunchiest, girthiest, fattiest, whateverestest, biggest bellied burbot I've ever seen in my entire life. Iced by my buddy Nick Linder, I could not stop staring at that thing, my goodness. So that fish had a couple of tiny sauger and walleye in its belly, but the rest of that girth was actually made up of crayfish. If you didn't know, burbot, aka eelpa, love them, a crawfish boil. Which brings us to number three. On today's episode of Burbot Eat the Darndest Things, I was sent this awesomeness from my buddy Brady Sakura, who was fishing near the Northwest Angle on Lake of the Woods when he caught this plump burbot. Actually, caught a couple that day. And its belly was chock full of 50 crayfish in that single fish. And it even had three rocks in its stomach because it was feeding on those bottom crayfish so aggressively. And yet that thing still had the audacity to eat his Lindy Glow Spoon. Unreal. And if those things will feed so aggressively that they'll eat a dang rock, then it's no surprise that Blake Thielen woke up to this mess. He said his bobber was down when he woke up in the morning, and he assumes that a walleye ate the dead stick, but then a burba came in and ate the whole thing. You gotta love those happy hour two for once. Number four. And the award for the strangest fish house pet goes to Dan Warnest in his pet sheep or goat or I, whichever it is, I don't know. Now obviously I don't know a whole lot about sheep, but if somebody told me that they had a pet sheep in their fish house, I guess my brain would instantly think of those cute little fuzzy ones from like a children's book growing up. That thing just looks stinky and I would know because I fish with some animals. Oh, and of course, the runner-up for the Strangest Fish House Pets Award also has to go to Greg Boge, I think is how it's pronounced, who definitely hits the ice with the most amount of bacon I've seen in a single fish house. But to be fair, both of those fish house critters are probably way more chill than my German short-haired pointer Vexy, short for Vexlar. Oh. <laughs> then again, she's way more chill now that she has a little gray in her face. Who's that? Okay, you can go back to napping. Number five. All right, I'm gonna round out this top five with a few shoulder-bearing walleyes that might need to be drug tested because they look way too big and roided out to be clean. 
This first one is coming from Walleye Tourney Hammer, Dwayne Helm, who just cracked his personal best hardwater walleye. He said this giant mark came in on his Lorance and he almost didn't even have enough time to move his Rapala jigging wrap before his rod got absolutely slammed. That's a wild fish, Dewey. Hey, let me know if you ever need some assistance getting those things through the hole. I know a guy. Unit 23, come in 23. Do you need me out there? Do you need my assistance? My Shut up, Farva. Next up, we got Cal Schwiel, who road tripped up to Lake Winnipeg in Manitoba and was rewarded with a 29 and a half inch greenback walleye. Look at the head on that thing. And man, those greenbacks just hit different. I'm having some serious Manitoba withdrawals that I think I'm gonna have to change sometime soon. And last but not least, you have to check out the shoulders on this crazy walleye, a master angler that Curtis Goldsboro caught on Saginaw Bay, fishing out of Linwood, Michigan. For some reason, that thing's shoulders just give me serious Brock Lesnar vibes. Crazy fish, and once again, just talking about fishing goals for this upcoming weekend. If you're sneaking out, good luck and be safe. That wraps up this week's top five, and a big shout out to Seafoam for keeping us running smooth and making this video series possible. Thank you, Seafoam. If you want more walleye and ice fishing related content like this, sign up for our free Target Walleye emails at targetwalleye.com, and this time I will see you back in seven days.